Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Thank you for visiting Hebrew Readers Church. We thank you. We thank you, family, friends and family, our supporters, everybody who, who definitely uh, is partaking in the, the body of Meshiach Yache. We glorify Alahayim, Ahaya Alahayim, and our mother Ruaka Kodoshi. And without further ado, we have a, a question that was sent to the email, so we'll definitely get to those questions first. And if anybody else has any questions, you can write it in the comment box below. We thank you for, for coming and tuning in, and we hope the, the lessons are edifying and, and are truly uh, helping you in your growth and your walk to become perfect in Yachim Meshiach. And so without further ado, we'll go ahead and start with our questions. I'm Zachariah. I'm Zachariah for everyone. And this is Brother Kafafo. <laughs> So everybody can, you know, firmly get acquainted. For anyone new, if you have any questions, please feel free to to write your comments down below. Uh, no matter what the question is, we whether how if you feel it's basic or you feel it's very advanced, write your question and and a higher willing we'll be able to answer it. So, you have anything? Praise Yachi. Glad right. Yacha is doing his good pleasure today. Why the name Yacha is opposed to any of the other names of the um, that people are calling upon, which are not the name of salvation. There were scriptures, Proverbs chapter 30, verse 4, Solomon prophesied that he said, What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? It was understood that they were going to hide the names and people were going to be calling on other names. Even Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 26, how you, uh, we were, our fathers were causing us for, to forget the name, which think to cause my people to forget my name for Baal. So people who were being led astray to other names for a long time. The scriptures that Ahaya left to guide us was Philippians chapter 2, verse 9, where it says, Wherefore, Allah hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. So that scripture lets us know that the name that was given to the son of Elohim was above every name that everyone else had in the Hebrew records. And when you look in the Hebrew records, Joshua is the name of multiple Israelites. And also, I, well, I, the Ishi, which is the English rendition of what you would hear some people say, Yeshaya or Yashaya or Yashaya. That's Ishi or Isaiah. Both of those are the names of multiple Israelites. So there's no way that could be the name of the Savior because that would contradict the scripture. Because his name is a name above every name, not similar to every name according to the scriptures. Then you can further confirm it with Acts of the, uh, Acts of the Apostle chapter 4 verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other. Because we already know that one Savior was given the name above every name. So nobody else had the same name as him, right? And then now we know there's not salvation in any other. Because when you call on that one name, he's the only one that had it. It goes on to say, for there is none other name under heaven given. So no one else was given that name among men. No one else among men was given the same name as him in the Hebrew records whereby we must be saved. That's how you know his name was not Yeshaya or any rendition of Joshua or which Jesus is also a Greek, tra Greek transliteration of Joshua. None of those are his names. Those are the, Joshua is the name of other Israelites in the English version of the name of other Israelites. And Yeshaya was a version that was created by the Israelites in America of the English word in the Bible, Ishi. You can find that English word Ishi in um, H, Concordus number H3469. is the name of about four other Israelites. The Concordus says it means he saves me or saving. When as we've been talking about Bantu being Hebrew, we understand this by Ahaya's grace in a Bantu language. 
it's uh, it, the the actual name, the true the true pronunciation of it. Now we also have. So you see why those other names could not be his name. Now, Yache was particular in his words before in the last book of Revelation chapter 22 that we found. It was just amazing when he showed what he said because he knew they were going to take and try to construe his name. That's why I said it through Solomon. It's amazing, right? Yeah. Now, Revelation 22 and 16, Yache said, this is amazing what he said. I, Yache, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. So this is for his people. This is for the churches. He said, I am the root. Why did he say I am the root? Because when it comes to David, he said, and the offspring of David. He knew the two things that people would use predominantly to blaspheme him. Changing his name and saying he wasn't born of the seed of David. Therefore, he said, I am the root. And what's the root word of salvation? H 3467. When you look in the Hebrew records, it's the only word that denotes, the only root word that denotes Savior. Ah, yeah. For the root word for salvation. And when you look at the definition for the root word of salvation, it's very evident that that's his name because his name defines him. It's H 3467. It says, properly to be open wide or free that is by implication to be safe causatively to free or secure at all avenging defend deliver deliverer help preserve rescue be safe bring salvation having salvation save savior get victory this is what describes yache because everyone's the names with yah um jeremiah Isaiah, Zephaniah, Zechariah, these were all names calling on Yah. That one, Yah Ahaya, they were calling for his salvation to save all the names being protected by, ja, by Yah. I'm sorry, it's not um, J, it's Yah being protected and all these things. They were calling on Ahaya for deliverance, calling for salvation. And Ahaya sent his salvation, the salvation, which is his son. As Luke chapter 2, Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, prophesied when he said, I have seen thy salvation. Salvation is actually a man, and Yache is that man. Now concerning the name in the... I want to uh, touch on something before you keep going. Okay. On uh, H 3467, right? Okay. It says, the Yiddish says what? What's the Yiddish? The Yiddish way they pronounce it? Right. Yasha. Yas Yasha. In the American and Hebrews, they say Yasha. Right. Right. Why is it ya Yache and not Yasha? It's Yache because the true Hebrew dialect. Yasha, most people are familiar at this point with the conversion of the people that call themselves the Jews and the creation of the Yiddish language. And most people are aware that that language comes from an Eastern European Germanic Gothic dialect. So we, that lets you know that is not Hebrew. And the very fact that the Israelites in America created a name that sounds just like the Yiddish, that is a key sign to let you know that's not Hebrew either. Now, the word Yache, why is it Yache? Because the awakening of well, the understanding that the children of Israel are actually the Bantus, the Aboriginals, the indigenous people scattered all the world that's been conquered. And Ahaya has been gracious because he did not say in his law and his testimony that he would cause all the children of Israel to stop speaking Hebrew. And that mercy of his has left the Hebrew language still in the language of the Bantus. It's most intact in the Bantu speakers, particularly the Igbo, Yoruba, and Ewe. You find it most in West Africa because when you look into the research on Bantu, Igbo is the root of Bantu language. Yet, in Bantu language, when you look at the root words, they have Hebrew dialects still in their root words. 
for and this is shown by this very word yache yache is a sentence in Igbo yache beanyi let him save us yache they if you say that to an Igbo speaker they actually understand you because you're speaking Hebrew right. and you're speaking their language because they speak Hebrew <laughs> When you speak an actual Hebrew, a Hebrew speaker can understand. This is the same language Yache spoke. Matter of fact, Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 said, Save. If you apply what it means in Igbo to the sentence that the angel said to Joseph, it makes sense. The angel said, I'm going to read that verse in particular. Matthew 1 and 21. The angel said, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt, and thou shalt call his name, let him save, for he shall save his people from their sins. <laughs> we can understand it. Che, you speak to a Bantu speaker, particularly the Igbo, for that particular word, because that pronunciation, che, is the ancient word. The shin, the chin, is is actually a ch sound because it's two front teeth when you look at what the actual letter is describing in what the picture is. It's a ch sound and the Igbo of the Bantu speakers have actually retained that root word, that root verb, and they still have the meaning. Because ch, we read in the concordance how it means to save, deliver, defend, avenge. In Igbo to this day, ch means to protect, safeguard save rescue deliver guard it's like they use it for the word for a goalie chebe or chebe chebe they know what the word means even for a chair because yache succors us right that was one of the definition right a chair is meant for your succor and protection the word for chair in Igbo is oche that's hebrew so why not say yasha because you're not speaking the true hebrew dialect and you're not saying what you actually want to say. You're saying something, but it's not what you want to be saying. Because remember Sirach chapter 1, verse 1 in the prologue? Right. It tells how things uttered from Hebrew in another tongue don't have the same power and the same meaning when translated in another language. That it is key because this is the very name of salvation, the only name on which we may be saved. Right. That's why the name is so important. Yes. Because if you don't believe on the name... And you bear all the fruit to the spirit, it's in vain. It's in vanity. Right. Because you didn't believe on the actual true name. Right. So that's why it's important. Uh, Chinedu wrote one question. I'm going to touch on that since we're here. Okay. He wrote, um, he said, um, could the one name through which there is salvation be the new name that is, that is yet to be given? Is it not operating in the spirit more far more important than flesh arguments of the name that yeah. you you want to go ahead no go ahead that there's not a such thing as a flesh argument of the name because that name is the name of salvation for the whole world that name is according to the spirit of prophecy seeing as though the angel told joseph what his son's name was going to be and the angel also told joseph's wife mary what the name was going to be this is a very important thing to understand because a part of the things that we need the fruits of the spirit and we have to believe on the name of his son that so if one doesn't have the right name one is not in the faith okay now first touching back on it is why with the fleshly arguments of the name in actuality we know the scripture says the law is spiritual but i am carnal so breaking is actually a breaking of the commandment to be calling on these other names because exodus chapter 23 verse 13 said in all things that i have said unto you be circumspect and make no mention of the names of the other alahayams neither let it be heard out of thy mouth mm -hmm. and even the righteous king david by the spirit of mishiach in him said in psalm 16 and 4 their sorrow shall be multiplied that hasten after another Allahayim. This is why you have names are important. This other Allahayim is being worshipped. Their drink offerings and their blood, their offerings, their drink offerings of blood will I not offer. 
nor take up their names into my lips. So speaking of the name is actually discussing spiritual things because there's spiritual entities at play. Remember, Satan said that he seeks to be worshipped like the Most High. Matter of fact, the son of perdition, the false prophet, is going to come into the world saying, I am the beloved. He's going to come saying, I am Adonai. One has to know who Ahaya and who his son Yache actually is to discern between good and evil. Now, going back to righteousness, the awakening. 1 Corinthians 15.34 said, Awake to righteousness and sin not. So a part of our awakening is to stop sinning and calling on idols, names, other names than the true name of the Son of Allah I am and the true name of the Father is actually a transgression. And Paul testified, for some have not the knowledge of Allah I am. I speak this to your shame. Not everyone understands that it actually matters who you call on because you can be transgressing the law if you're calling on the wrong Allah I am. And further, Paul actually continues to show this awakening to righteousness, this is a part of attaining to the fruits of the Spirit. Because Ephesians chapter 5 verse 9 says, For the spirit of, fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. So it is a part of the righteousness of Allah Hayyam to call upon the right name, because then you would be in the truth, which is, excuse me, a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say in Ephesians 5 and 14, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Meshiachah shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Because remember Paul said, not everyone has this knowledge to awake to righteousness and sin not in, in uh, Colossians, I mean, 1 Corinthians 15 and 34. Continuing in Ephesians 5 and 16, redeeming the time for the days are evil. There's much fat, false doctrines, much heresies. Yacha even said, many shall, Yacha even said, many shall come in my name, saying that I am Mishiaka. So you have to very much be aware of who's who. And sadly, the children of Israel were one of the biggest stumbling blocks, are one of the biggest stumbling blocks of the world. Paul testified in Romans 10 and 4, 1 through 4. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to the Allah Hayyam of Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of Allah Hayyam, but not according to knowledge. Remember, part of the knowledge was knowing to stop sinning. For they being ignorant of Allah Hayyam's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Sadly, we've literally taken the gospel and turned it into our own to make it about the fact that we are the children of Israel. When the gospel in the scriptures, the everlasting gospel the angel came with in the book of Revelations uh, 14, I believe it is, it was about repentance and fear Allah Hayyam and worship Him. Sadly, we've taken the gospel to make it about ourselves. And we've also taken the righteousness of Allah Hayyam and made it our own righteousness by making our own language in America. When our own brothers and sisters were still speaking Hebrew, where we came from on the slave ships, and we actually came over here speaking, came over to the Americas speaking Hebrew. I was born in the Virgin Islands. There are words in the Bible, for example, the word for dumb, the word is dumumu. That's in the Hebrew language still to this day. It's, you can find it in Psalms 131 when he said, I, quiet, I have quieted myself as a child. The word is dumb. And the word mumu, if you know someone from the islands, more times than I ask them what mumu means, they're going to say a person that is slow, a person that's not smart. That's the same thing it means in the Hebrew scriptures because we were speaking Hebrew. The word du or du in, uh, um, in Igbo, it still means to be quiet, to be silent. We speak Hebrew. Our four, we spoke Hebrew when we came to the Americas. Even in America, in Louisiana, the, uh, the people down there say, eh, be. be is the word for how. Zach, why you mentioned that before? Our dialects, the way, our accents, the way we speak comes from Hebrew. The way we throw all our words together, <laughs> it's just Hebrew accents. You still don't understand. Me. Right. I was going to say it. I don't understand <laughs> Zach. <what's> so <laughs> and he's from Alabama, but right. it's a Hebrew accent. It's actually the language we spoke. 
So it's sad to see, as Paul testified in Romans 10 and 3, and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of Allah. Right. We haven't done things according to the law and the testimony. The scriptures didn't say Judah would not be speaking Hebrew. The scriptures do attest that Asher, Gad, and Dan will forget their languages. This is in the testament of the 12 patriarchs, but it didn't say the southern kingdom. The Psalm 76 actually said in Yoda is Allah known. The southern kingdom retained the language. They retained the root words. The, the Ahaya has been gracious. It's interesting that this has come up because Ahaya had us go back into the Hebrew document right. and add. He's been shown much, much information to see that we actually, the, the Bantus are actually speaking Hebrew. And the document is, um, is pretty much done. You just have to review it before putting it on the website to make sure it's according to Ahaya's pleasure. But this, we have to do things according to the scriptures. The scriptures testified in Jeremiah 17 that we will lose our heritage, right. which is the law and the land, according to scriptures. He didn't say we will lose our language. Right. That's why you can still find the Bantu speaking Hebrew today. And it's an awake, this is a part of the awakening as well, because they not all the Bantus know they actually speak Hebrew. Right. It's an, they it's, don't know. Right? It's an interesting thing. A lot of words they say, like Ishi. Ishi means head. Like one, if you want to say the leader, on your Ishi the one that leads us. Yache said in Hosea 2 and 16, in that day thou shalt call me Ishi, and no more call me Bali. That word Ishi means he, uh, champion, man, husband, head. That shows that prophetically we will realize who our head actually is, which is Yache. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, Yache is the head of every man. And it's still sitting in the language of the Bantus. Ishi is the word for head. So it's, it's amazing what Yache is doing. Finishing up in Corinthians uh, 10 and 4. For Mishiaka is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. He, we have to get to him. We have to be like him. We have to know his name to get to him. Even to this day, we learn each other by knowing each other's name. Right. You have to know his salvation by knowing his name, Yache. Uh, what was it? Shabbat before last, we were discussing the names and um, the importance of pronunciation and whatnot and transliterations and whatnot. Um, Ahai has been gracious. He's been given understanding to help scripturally understand how important the names are and also the information to know that the name Yache is not a is not transliterated or any rendition found in the Greek um, Jesus that has been used uh, in the uh, English language. Because Jesus is a transliteration of the Latin word Isus. And I don't know if I pronounced it exactly right because I don't speak Latin, right? Um, and that Latin word comes from the Greek, Isus, which we see in the text. So, and, etym and when you go to the etymology and take it back, it takes you back to Aramaic. Ah, I will get that tab put up and get all that information. It was exciting to see how they really came up with that. And what was amazing is what was shown, it shows why they tried to allude, tried to allegedly say that the Israelites spoke Aramaic. Because they needed to push that, 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 that narrative in order to justify the false name. Because they get that pronunciation from the Aramaic, not the true Hebrew language. Uh, Chinedu's comment. Um, yes, Joshua. Actually, this is, is going to get interesting. Actually, uh, he's, Chinedu said, yes, Joshua, but what is the Greek and Latin of Yache? Hence, what is the English? This is what's interesting. They have no, they have none for Yahweh. What they did with the Joshua, Jesus, Yeshua stuff, that's all over from the name Yeshua, um, the Jeshua and Joshua. For Yahweh, they don't have any recording of it. The true, um, true uh, account of it. The scriptures say that Pilate transcribed it in the Hebrew the Latin and the Greek.
where is that where is that transcription because transliterations you have to actually pronounce the word in another language now english the english yache is not the english word yache is hebrew so how, when, if one would ask how do i say yache in english you say yache because when saying someone's name in another language that your language does not have you say their name his name is yache and that's the name that every knee is going to bow before and that's the name that everyone is going to confess that he is lord or he is adona or adona yeah the word adona yeah is very particular for him he actually in the scriptures is uh, h 136 so um it's amazing why wow. it was really interesting what was shown in the uh in looking into that so for yache's name it's yache that's that's the name there's that's the only name where we may be saved there's no change in it because if one with hebrew language you make an adjustment or rendition or you make another rendition or change the pronunciation or alter it you're saying a different word and you're not calling on yache so for that name because that name is wherein we may be saved we can't play around about that name because if we don't have it we won't be saved because our salvation literally depends on the name among also keeping the commandments and bearing the fruits because it was a commandment to believe on the name and even when you read john chapter 3 it tells that uh the condemnation this is amazing how there's such controversy with the name because the name is all important it says um verse john 3 and 18 it says he that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of allah Hayyam. and so you see scripture that we have to actually believe in that name in his name not uh, another um, form of it because another form is not actually his name um, now what's this next thing here hey we got brother Zakwa on here Chabata Chalam again brother Zakwa um, Revelations 9 and 11 the angel of the bottomless pit okay and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon this is interesting because what John just showed Apollyon is not a transliteration of Abaddon he gave the word in the Greek language that means the same thing actually it doesn't mean the exact same thing but means something that correlates to the word Ab Abaddon which the Hebrew word for Abaddon that shows that John just gave a translation he gave the interpretation of the Hebrew word Abaddon which in Greek would be Apollyon so that right there that's just a translation and if one wanted to know what does Yache name translate to in English check the Strong's Concordance H3467 his name translates to Savior, uh, Salvation, Deliverer, Victory, uh, saves, Saving. It's, so if one wants to know what his name translates to in English, it translates to Savior, right? Right, right. Because uh, the... Uh, as Zakwa said, Jesus is not the Greek translation of Yache. That's uh, absolutely true because Jesus comes again. Jesus is English, the late English, after the 17th century, because the letter J came in in about 1634. That's when it was Jesus. Before that, it was Isis because they didn't have a J. And that came, you had also Old French, which was Isu which both English, the Old English, and the French came from the Latin Isis. And that Latin derived from the Greek 
Jesus, as we see in the Greek text. And that Greek derived from the Aramaic uh, Isho. If you look into the Aramaic word for, for, for Jeshua, or what we know as Jeshua in the uh, English text of the um, Hebrew scriptures, and it's also known in the Yiddish, because the Yiddish, you know, the Yiddish was compiled of Indo-European, Germanic, Gothic languages, along with uh, Shemitic languages. So they took a lot of their pronunciations from the Aramaic. Hence, you have the Yiddish speakers. They say Yeshua. And that, all that, that's H, Strong's Concordance number H3442, to look that up, to see that's not the name Yache. And even the name what is known as Yeshua or Yehoshua in uh, Yiddish and is actually Isho. Yeshua is Isho in Aramaic. Those, that, those words come from the root word in the Strong's Concordance, H7768. It means to cry out, to, to cry for help. Call is actually meaning to call for salvation. If you have the opportunity to get on the website and download the Bantu's Hebrew document, you can uh, get edification on the true Hebrew pronunciation of those words from about number 129 to about 133. So, yeah, it's, that's what was amazing too. That concept of um, Jesus being corresponding to Yahche is just not true. All right. The Strong's Concordance for Yahche is H3467. And in the Bantu's Hebrew document is the one of the last words as you get close to the end where you can see how those many definitions that you see in matter of fact I have it the, the I have it sitting here on the screen by grace uh, Yache they say it's a primitive root but in truth the root word is actually che which is found among the Igbos and as we've been discussing with the Hebrew language tone pitch pronunciation these variations change the meaning of words. Hence, you have all these different definitions. For example, the, it says primitive root, properly to be open, wide or free. That is, by implication, to be safe, causatively to free or succor, at all avenging, defend, deliver, deliverer, help, preserve, rescue, be safe, bring salvation, having salvation, save, savior, get victory. In the English language, Yache can mean all these things. Now, it's amazing because these different, def these different definitions actually come from the root words. When you get the opportunity to go and get the Bantu's Hebrew document, you see why it can mean free and succor. It's because when you pronounce it differently, you get a different definition. But when you pronounce Che, Yache, you actually get the definition of his name, Savior, Save, Safeguard, Deliver, Protect. In the Igbo language, you would hear them saying, O chebere, chebe, ahaya chebe anyi, you know, onyi ishi anyi, chebe anyi, is the one that protects us, the one that guards us and keeps us safe. So that's why it's so particular and, 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 and necessary to pronounce the name Yache to make sure one is pronouncing it properly. As uh, you all know, we had been writing it, Y-A-S-C-H-E, to try and help the brothers and sisters, because this was all new, finding out the true Hebrew language and whatnot. And according to world information, the what is known as the letter Shin has been taught that it represents the S-H sound. So we had wrote it, Y-A-S-H-E, in order to help bring the brothers and sisters along, even though we're continually telling you all the true pronunciation is Yache. But you all have been with us for some time now, and now I has been given the grace to get to the, the truth of it entirely, to know that, that what is known as the letter Shin in the Hebrew alphabet, alphabet is actually Chin, and it can make more pronunciation than just the S-A sound. You have words like Esau's name. Esau in Hebrew is also, when you look, uh, I think it's H6213, if I'm not mistaken, for Esau's name. Also, it means to be advanced, to be quick. And in the Igbo language, also means to be fast. 
right? That's one, and that's the, the chin that's in that word. Yet it makes a so sound. Now, you also have words like um, the word language. The word language is la song. The, it's, a, it's a chin there, but it still makes the s sound, a regular S. And then you have other Hebrew words like, what's a word that makes the sh sound? Ah, Yeshua, right? What they say is Jeshua. They say Yeshua and Yiddish Jeshua in English. The actual Hebrew word is Yashua. Shoa comes from the Yoruba dialect. Shoa. Shoa means to, to seek for help, to seek to get free. Just as H sixty H H seventy seven sixty eight talks about um to 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 get free or to hollow for help. So you have the word Ya Yashua, which is uh which we know as Jeshua, and then you have Joshua, which is Yahoshua, because the root word in that word is also explaining more because of the H and the O in that Yao, Yaho, Yao Shoa. It's uh it's explaining more because Ho means to shout and Shoa means to also look for salvation, look for help, seek for help. So you can see how his name was actually calling on Yah, which calling on him, that one, for help or salvation. So those names were actually calling on Yache to come calling for Ahaya to send his salvation and we know from the book of Luke chapter 2 that the salvation of Alahayam is literally the man Yache when you look at what Simeon had uh, prophesied by the Holy Spirit concerning him so now that we've had the opportunity to kind of commune with you all more the truth of the rendition of the name for us to understand it all in simplicity is Y A C H E to get the proper pronunciation Yache. That's the actual name of the Savior. As we've been telling you, now we're going to stick to pronouncing it as it should be, so that there's no confusion for anyone, and that those who see it may know that name. Because we are getting into some troublous times, and we definitely need that word, need that name for our salvation. Now, Zakwa said, um, what's what we have here? Shinedu is action, something here. Now, Shinedu, you have said, my savior. That my savior is not Yache. Yache is savior. Yache does not mean my savior. If one wants to say my savior, you have to add the ya and the n in the Hebrew language. That, so one be sure to make sure one is saying and um, given the meaning of the name correctly. The word yache means savior. So that we make sure everybody understands it. Uh, now, she knows. Right, Savior is not the name above our names in English. Yache is the name. Okay. Praise Yache. Glad you got the understanding, Sister Julia. Uh, Chinedu had mentioned how words get spelt the same but pronounced differently and mean different things. That, be, that is because what you see, for example, in the Igbo, the Yoruba, the Bantu dialects, they still spoke Hebrew, though they didn't write Hebrew. So they, would, they were obviously conquered by Rome, and they were given the Latin alphabet, along with digraphs and diacritics, to help them, and tonal mark, to help them speak their actual language, because the Latin alphabet cannot truly denote their language, which is Hebrew. That's why you will see a word that's spelled one way, but depend if you pronounce it with a high tone or a low tone, you change what the word means. Or if you pronounce the, the uh, yeah, the high tone, low tone, and pronunciation changes what the word means. One of the biggest words is, uh, the easiest words among the Igbos is the word aqua. You have different, you can say aqua or aqua, 
or aqua there's different ways to say it and one can mean bed one can mean clothes one can mean egg to have an example okay um, as Zakwa said, Yache is the root word of salvation. It's the, now, it's interesting. That's right. It's when you get to the root, 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 going all the way down to the root. Because I had mentioned earlier how 87768 is a root word for Joshua and Jeshua. Now, the root, now, this gets interesting because Zakwa, as you all know, I has been showing him the. Uh, showing him many things and what he touched on there that root word che because the the chin the letter chin is still in the name for joshua and jeshua and words pertaining to salvation so that root word is actually a verb when you get the opportunity to look at the bantu's hebrew document you get to see it's a verb that is in those words and still denote and save right and that's why Yache said in Revelations 22 and 16, I am the root. He was particular because he knew one of the heresies would be against his name. He knew the heresies would be against his name and against his lineage according to the flesh. That's why he said, I am the root and offspring of David. So he identified the two things that people would use to try to confuse the people of Allah Hayyam, both Israelites and Gentiles. They would use the name and try to say his name is not Yache and give all these other names that they're given. And they would try to say he doesn't come from the lineage of David according to the flesh. And he testified that he is the offspring of David. And he also testified that he's from the beginning. He said he's the bright and morning star in Revelation 22 and 16 because when I said let there be light, it was Yache that shined forth into the world. To destroy the darkness and the darkness could not comprehend it and he is the light the light of every man that cometh into the world as uh, John chapter 1 about verse 1 to 4 talks about uh, sunny earth nice to have you here glad to have you to spend this opportunity with us we praise Yache that you're here today uh, sister Julia said there are a lot of Zosa words in there as well um, I, well, I don't know what you were referring to in particular. Zosa is a Bantu language. So when you say a lot of Zosa words in there, I don't know exactly what you were referring to. But it's Bantu, so I'm sure not surprised at this point. As Zakwa mentioned last shout how we just laugh at it now, seeing how much the Hebrew root words are in the dialects among the Bantus. Oh, I'm Zakwa, I see you quote you quoted Revelation 22 and 16 and I'm <laughs> I'm come lately here. <laughs> I didn't realize you even you quoted it. Uh, now it, as that, as you see Zakwa said this, so my savior would be Yacheya. And you can find that in H 3470. No, H 3469. I'm sorry. H 3469, where you'll find Yacheya. That sadly is a name in the Hebrew text. You can find it in the English is written as Ishi. So what you would hear other groups, um, these the Israelites groups call upon, they would say, um, you hear them say Yeshaya or Yashaya and things like that. That comes from H3469, which is Ishi in the English of the Old Testament. And um, it is truly Yacheya in the actual Hebrew language and that's not the name of the Savior because it's the name of other Israelites and Philippians 2 and 9 said that he had a name above every name so no other person could have his name in the Hebrew records um, and then Yacheya Yacheya is the Isaiah Zach was talking about there that's H3470 and so it's amazing how the language um, is is just showing everything. Uh, Brother Niger, in what verse did the people ask what Yache's name would be? I... Interesting. The verse where they asked what Yache's name would be? Um, I don't know. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4, Solomon was being facetious when 
because by the spirit of prophecy he understood that people are going to forget and not know the father's name and the son's name and he said in proverbs 30 and 4 um in his in speaking with his wisdom that was given him he said in uh proverbs 30 verse 2 he says surely i am more brutish than any man now this is where he's being facetious because we know Solomon was given wisdom but he's showing how it would take for us to be foolish to be brutish to not know the names surely I am more brutish than any man and have not the understanding of a man I neither learned wisdom nor have the knowledge of the holy so he, who hath ascended up into the heaven or descended who hath uh, who hath gathered the winds in his fists who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? Because he's speaking of the Father. Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya. And what is his son's name if thou canst tell? Because now this is, you know this is prophetic because he was writing this knowing full well what the name was and we had the Hebrew records with the names as well. So it's amazing how it was known that there will come a time where the names will be forgotten. So, Brother Niger, in regards to what verse, if people ask what Yahweh's name would be, uh, know of this Solomon verse, but when they, a verse where they ask what his name would be, I don't particularly. Okay, Zach, while you, you have it there, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, you have Matthew chapter 1, where the angel came unto Joseph, and he told him, Matthew 1 and 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yache, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, this is interesting, because Niger... You ask that question and you speak Igbo. So you speak Bantu. So this is going to be interesting. Hebrew, Hebrew names have a meaning, right? Moses was called Muchi because he was drawn out of the water. And that word Muchi actually describes being pulled out, being taken out, right? Because he was drawn out of the water. Now the angel said, thou shalt call his name Yache. And he gave the reason, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, what he shall save, this is amazing because in Igbo, the word yache or yachebe means let him save. <laughs> so <laughs> even to this day in Igbo, he tells about yache. They understand, let him save. And so if we were to read this scripture with the English meaning of what Yache means in Igbo, we could read it and still understand it, which shows that that Bantu word Yache is actually his name and is still understood in the, in the Hebrew languages today. Uh, Matthew 1 and 21, I'm going to read it with the Igbo translation of Yache today, okay? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, let him save. For he shall save his people from their sins. It still makes sense to this day his name is Yache because that's the actual language. That's the true name. So that we thought that's in the document as well. We thought that was amazing. Seeing how the name, the understanding of the meaning was still sitting in the Bantu language to this day after all this time. But ah, yes, great. And it's amazing as well because prophetically in Isaiah 52, Isaiah 52 and uh what is it, verse 6? Where well, Ahaya, he testified that we would know his name. He testified we would know his name. And here we are. Now we have the names Ahaya, Ashre Ahaya, and Yache, Mishiaka, our salvation. This is Isaiah 52. And um, 52 and... I'm going to go to verse 5. It says, Now therefore, what have I here, saith Ahaya, that my people is taken away for naught? 
they that rule over them make them to howl, saith Ahayam. My name continually, every day is blasphemed. We didn't know his name, nor are we obeying his name. Verse 6, therefore my people shall know my name. He, he, was go, he said, we're going to know his name, and here we are today. Therefore they shall know in that day, here in the end times, that day, that I am he that doth speak. Behold, this is I, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation. That publishes salvation, let you know we will know his name, Ahaya Ashre Ahaya, and we will publish salvation, knowing the, the son's name, Yache, which is our salvation, the salvation of Allahayam. That saith unto Zion, Thy Allahayam reigneth. And here we are in the end times. Ah, this is amazing. 